Hello guys, so before doing the full review of the Meizu Pro 7, let's have a final look at how I think about the camera of this phone. So as you probably know, the Meizu Pro 7 boasts the same camera setup as the Meizu Pro 7 Plus does. The main camera consists of two Sony IMX386 sensors with 12 megapixels and f2.0 aperture, of which one sensor operates in monochrome mode and there is a dual LED dual tone flash and on the front camera you find a 16 megapixel front shooter but as with uh, the Meizu Pro 7 Plus you don't have to use the front camera you can also do um, selfies with the main camera um, by using the secondary info display on the rear Doing that is fairly simple. You simply flip the phone over and the info display will turn on. Or if it's already flipped and the info display is turned off, you can double tap on the screen to enable it, at least if you have this setting enabled. And to actually take a selfie using the secondary display, you simply swipe up or down very fast and then the camera application will start. You can take either pictures in blur slash bokeh mode or you have a beautify and a normal mode. To close this mode again, you simply swipe down or up again. So let's have a look at the camera application and this one does offer a lot of features, but it still is very simple to use and it's again exactly the same as with the Meizu Pro 7 Plus. You have three main modes, beautify, photo and video. And when you are in photo mode, you can enable the bokeh effect by tapping on this dual camera icon on the top. And then if you are within a distance of 1.5 meters to the object you wanna focus on, you can use the bokeh mode. Also, you have HDR mode available, you have um, LED flash available, some filters, and of course, also little settings icon where you can change the photo size and stuff like that. Um, to flip the uh, camera or enable the front camera, you simply tap this icon, so it's pretty simple, and it will then automatically enter the Smart Beautify mode. For videos, the Meizu Pro 7 does support them with up to Full HD. There is no 4K recording option, which is a bit strange because the chipset itself would support it. But anyhow, that's how it is, only Full HD, but at least there is EIS and also autofocus available and it's pretty fast on this phone. You almost don't notice it focusing. It's really that fast. And also you can record full HD video with the 16 megapixel front camera, which is very decent. Besides of those modes, there are a few extra options when you tap this icon here in the upper left corner. There is a makeup mode, slow motion mode, time lapse, panorama, scan, which is for QR codes, a GIF mode and a black and white mode. But the most interesting thing for most likely is the Pro mode where you can really set everything yourself. And that also includes the focus. So you have the option to completely control the focus manually, which, is, which, which comes very handy when you try to take, for example, a macro picture of some very small object that the autofocus can't handle. Then you simply turn on the uh, manual focus and can still get it sharp. Um, and you also have the option to um, let the remaining options be controlled automatically. So you don't need to use a full manual mode. It still is rather easy to use then. Regarding bugs, the camera app of the Meizu Pro 7 unfortunately shares the same issues as the Meizu Pro 7 Plus, which means that it is a bit buggy and unstable. And the thing that annoys me the most and happens um, most often is that when you have the camera app running in the background, you're doing something else, putting it into standby, carrying it around in your pocket, then take it out again to take another picture, run the camera application from the background, it sometimes happens that the focus doesn't work anymore. Right now it does, but like, out of 10 tries, like four to five attempts will fail. And then you need to force close the camera app using the app switcher and open it again. And then the camera application will work as usual. And also when using the bouquet mode frequently, it sometimes happens that the bouquet effect doesn't work anymore. It will then look um, awkward or doesn't apply the bouquet effect anymore or you can't open the pictures afterwards and this also needs to be fixed using a camera application restart or even a reboot of the phone. 
So those instability issues are kind of annoying and I really hope they will fix those issues finally. Right now they didn't. So enough looking at the camera application. Let's now have a look at actual camera samples taken on the Meizu Pro 7. So this one has been taken during some nice hiking using the Meizu Pro 7. As you can see it looks really good like on the Pro 7 Plus. We've got a lot of detail, really good natural colors and as you can see this picture has been taken during very good weather conditions so we had bright sunshine there. And yeah, it's just a really nice and well-balanced picture that even looks gorgeous on a large screen or when zooming in. So yeah, camera-wise um, the Meizu Pro 7 performs about the same on daylight pictures like the Pro 7 Plus. Here is another gorgeous photo taken from something more close, a nice tree with beautiful color reproduction. I mean, those colors here do really pop, very intense, but still very natural. It really looked like that in nature. Maybe not as intense, but still this color intensity looks really beautiful. And I really, really like this picture. And here is another picture of some beautiful fall leaves, this time even closer, but also some far away. And as you can see, the amount of detail in this picture again is really, really good. Um, you can see every single leaf and colors do look just gorgeous and also the dynamic range here is just top-notch. Um, really really nice picture here. Next let's have a look at some more complicated situations. For example this one which has been taken during sunset so there hasn't been that much light available. Yet still you have a really nice looking picture. I'm looking at this picture here on a nice large 27 inch screen of an iMac 5K and it still looks beautiful and I also watched it on a television one time with um, more than 50 inches and it again looked very beautiful. Um, the amount of noise is very low, you again have pretty good detail there. Um, so yeah, really nothing done bad here. But even when you take a picture with direct sunlight, for example this one, the results still look really good. Um, this one has been taken using the HDR mode and despite um, holding it directly into the sun, I still have a pretty clear and detailed picture with just minimal lens flare. Maybe a bit of a fogginess inside the picture but nothing overly disturbing. Um, I think the picture still looks rather beautiful. Let's zoom in a bit to check out the detail and as you can see it still is pretty good. So yeah, it performs pretty nice even during complicated lighting situations. But what about low light photography? Well, let's check out some samples of uh, this one. So for example here, this one has been taken free-handed, so without any tripod and with uh, automatic settings. There has been no manual settings, no long exposure or anything like that. Just a normal picture, point and shoot. No complicated settings and I think it looks pretty good. The dynamic range of course isn't the best. I haven't used HDR for this one, so the Lantern here is a little bit overexposed, but I'm still satisfied with it. The amount of noise is rather minimal, but compared to the Meizu Pro 7 Plus, it's a bit higher and the colors don't look as natural. They look a bit reddish, um, which might be caused by the different camera signal processor used in the Helio P25 compared to the Helio X30 that is used in the Meizu Pro 7 Plus. And you can also see this when doing um, long exposure pictures using a professional setup. For example, this one. This one has been taken using long exposure for about eight seconds and a tripod. And as you can see, like on the Pro 7 Plus, we get a lot of detail and a very low amount of noise, but the colors look a bit reddish. I can show this to you by opening up a sample of the Meizu Pro 7 Plus. Um, I did the exactly same picture with this phone. Let me just look it up. Um, here we go, Meizu Pro 7 Plus. Uh, I took lots of pictures with this one. There we go. This is the very same picture taken on the Meizu Pro 7 Plus. So as you can see, colors look a little bit more natural on uh, the Meizu Pro 7 Plus than they do on the Meizu Pro 7 with the Helio P25. The detail is a little bit better, 
you don't have this fogginess and that definitely is less noise. Also on the Pro 7 there's almost no noise but a little bit is noticeable. But here on the Pro 7 Plus it's zero noise. And I did another comparison picture, this one. So here we have the picture of the Pro 7 Plus and now I will open up the picture of the Pro 7. There you go. And here again you can see the color difference and the difference in detail between the two phones. The Pro 7 looks more reddish and not as natural as the Pro 7 Plus pictures do. So both perform very very well during low light shots, but there is a little bit of difference. So in standard camera modes the Meizu Pro 7 performs pretty well, but what about bokeh mode? As you remember the Meizu Pro 7 Plus had some issues there. Basically the bokeh effect was really nice looking, but it always had issues um, getting uh, complicated structures right. It often applied the bokeh effect to the wrong areas of the picture and sadly that's the case for the Meizu Pro 7 as well. Um, sometimes those pictures look really nice as you can see here, um, but often it screws them up. For example on this one. This looks just shitty. This one is pretty good. Um, look at the bouquet effect in the background. This looks really really nice and realistic, but again it didn't get the contours of the front objects right. Also on this one, much better there, but still some issues here. This one looks pretty much perfect. Nothing done wrong here. This one looks pretty much okay too. And also this one except for this area here. So as you can see the bouquet mode performs very well with um, simple objects without any complicated contours, but as soon as it gets more complicated the algorithm will struggle to apply the bouquet effect to the right areas of the picture. So hopefully they will be able to improve this with time. The next thing to have a look at are pictures taken using the front camera. So for a 16 megapixel front camera this one is disappointing just like uh, the one on the Meizu Pro 7 Plus was. It is far behind a OnePlus 5 or a Xiaomi Mi 6. As you can see the colors just don't look um, very nice. They are washed out and the amount of detail is just really bad on this front camera considering it's a 16 megapixel shooter. But on the other hand it doesn't matter that much since you can easily take um, selfies with the main camera using the secondary info display. So it's really not a the worst thing in the world that this front camera doesn't perform so well. What we of course should have a look at as well are videos. As I said in the beginning those are recorded with um, Full HD only, no 4K available. Um, the quality is okay, it's not the best, um, the detail could be a little bit better on landscape situations, but for close-ups and macro recordings the quality is really okay. And what's quite impressive is how fast the focus is. Um, it pretty much focuses immediately and you almost don't notice it focusing, there is no jumping or anything like that as you can see. And the video also is really smooth. So yeah. Landscape quality could be better, but besides of that it's pretty good and the audio quality actually is fairly acceptable too. Yeah, and, and that's about it. This is how the camera of the Meizu Pro 7 performs. It's a decent flagship camera. It doesn't have all the features um, I would like it to have and it also struggles with the bouquet mod. But besides of that, um, it does really really nice detailed pictures, great looking colors and 
well, low light performance is really good too, even though the Meizu Pro 7 Plus still does perform a bit better. But um, considering the price tag, which is around 300 euros at the moment, um, this is really one of the best camera deals you can get out of China right now, in my opinion. So yeah, that's it for this camera sample video. Thanks for watching and see you soon with the full review on the Meizu Pro 7. Bye bye.